afternoon and welcome to our Christmas Bible study. We are doing a two-part Bible study called Happily Ever After. This is the first of two, and this is the story of God redeeming his people. So this week, we're going to talk about Mary, Joseph, and the angel Gabriel and the backstory behind Christmas. And next week, we're going to take a look at Jesus and how he came and he changed everything. But before we get started, I want to kind of go over some things with you guys, what we're going to do tonight. Um, we're going to do a backstory on Christmas, and we are also uh, going to talk about the particular details of Mary, Joseph, and the angel Gabriel. And then we're going to take a look in our Bibles to Luke chapter 1, and we're going to start in verse number 26. But before we get to all that, I want to kind of do a backstory on Christmas. The backstory on why is it so important for us to understand about Christmas? Why is Christmas so important? And before we go in, into great detail about everything, I'll, we have to go way back. I'm talking about we have to go way back, far back. Matter of fact, we have to go back to the beginning. Genesis chapter 1, it says, well, it doesn't really say, but once upon a time. But it says that once upon a time, God created the heavens and the earth. And we know that in a sequence of days, he created everything in a certain order. And we know that at the end, he created Adam. Adam lived in the Garden of Eden. And shortly after God created Adam, he created Eve. And the purpose that God created man, Adam and Eve, was because he wanted to have fellowship with him and to worship with him. And matter of fact, uh, we see that God, he went in... To the garden of eden and he walked with them in the cool of the day so god wanted to have fellowship with man and he wanted us to worship him we all know that uh adam and eve they sinned and no matter how big or small that sin is that sin it broke the fellowship between god and man now we have a perfect god we have an imperfect man and so that broke the relationship and the fellowship that we had with god and ever since then, God has been working diligently to set up a way for man to be able to have a relationship with him. Even though it was temporary throughout the whole Old Testament, uh, we're going to see that there's a temporary thing like uh, God created a, he made a covenant with Israel. And as God made a covenant with Israel, they began to travel around and they, they had a, a tabernacle that had the Ark of the Covenant and it had the Holy of Holies. This was God's temporary place that he dwelt so that he could be among his people uh, we also see that there were uh, lots of uh, sacrifices that were given in the old testament these sacrifices were given for the atonement for their sin so that they can have a relationship with god but it was always a temporary because they had to they had to continually do their um, sacrifices over and over and over again and it never really stopped and all this right here was a temporary basis and you know through the whole old testament god is setting up the a, a time like christmas like the birth of jesus where it's going to be it's going to transfer from temporary to permanent and so here we are we have a we have a god who is setting it up just for us so just for jesus to come back so that we can have a permanent relationship a permanent buyback a love for him matter of fact the word redeem here that we see it says god uh, redeeming his people the word redeeming is to buy back god is literally buying us back so that he can have us back into his fellowship and so that's the reason why we um we celebrate christmas is such a big thing when jesus came it went from a temporary thing to a permanent thing we don't have to go to the tabernacle anymore we don't have to do sacrifice anymore we don't have to do a lot of the things that we did in the old testament and so that's why it's so important but god has a permanent plan to redeem his people and that permanent plan includes Jesus. Matter of fact, uh, we're going to look at some things today. Um, this is a, a play on words. Uh, the title of today's Bible study is called Autogodography. And uh, when you write an autobiography, you're writing a story about yourself. And today we're going to talk about allowing God to write his story on your life. The autogodography is not really a word. It's just a play on words, actually. So if you look it up in your dictionary or you look it up on Google, you're probably not going to find it because I just made it up. It's just a play on words that, that we want God to be able to write his story on our life. And so right now we're going to take a look at some details that we have 
on uh, some people that we're going to talk about tonight, Mary, Joseph, and the angel Gabriel. Some of these details are very important because we see in the Old Testament that the prophecy was uh, fulfilled here in Luke chapter 1. But we see in the Old Testament where God said this has to happen for this to happen. And so we're going to see some prophecy fulfilled uh, tonight. Uh, Mary is the mother of Jesus. Of course, some things that we know about her. Uh, first of all, she is espoused to Joseph. The word espoused here doesn't necessarily only mean that she is engaged to. It, she's technically in the Jewish marriage. She has already given her her um, vows. She's already given her promise. She's already been committed to Joseph, and she is legally already married to Joseph, but they have not consummated the marriage yet because Joseph's responsibility now in the Jewish marriage is to go and to prepare a place for Mary, and when he's done, he's going to come and steal her away in a romantic way and take her uh, into the house, and they're going to consummate the wedding uh, not only is she a spouse to Joseph, but she is also, she is a virgin, which is very important. We see in Isaiah chapter 7, verse number 14, that it is uh, pro prophesied a long, long time ago that Mary, or not, it doesn't say Mary, but it says that he will be born of a virgin. So this is a key uh, thing that is being fulfilled right now. And so next we see that she spoke to an angel. His name is Gabriel. We'll talk about him in just a little bit, but she spoke to an angel, he came, he showed up and he said, hey, you know, you're going to have a baby. And uh, she had uh, a few questions and she was kind of uh, uh, scared. And it was it was an interesting conversation. We'll read about it in just a minute. But she had an opportunity to have a conversation with an angel. Uh, the angel told her that she is highly favored, which is very unusual. There are not a lot of highly favored women in the Bible, so this is very good for her. We do, it doesn't really give us bullet points of saying like, this is why she's highly favored, but it said that she was highly favored um, among women. Also, it says that uh, she is the Lord's servant. We see here in Luke chapter 1 that she heard what the angel had to say, and uh, even though she had questions, even though she had uh, some concerns, we see that she is... In essence, she is the Lord's servant. She says, do unto me as you would have to do unto me. All right. So next we have uh, G or we have Jesus, his father, his earthly father, which is Joseph. So we have him, and um, here's some information on him. We know a little bit more about him. Uh, first of all, he is a spouse to Mary. He's already a, in a covenant relationship with her, and uh, he is um, preparing a place for her at this point. Also, it says that he is a carpenter by trade. And so you see the picture there. Um, he is a carpenter, and he does, he builds things. And so I'm pretty sure that the house that he is preparing for Mary was probably fairly nice and secure. Also, um, he heard from an angel. that He had a conversation with an angel that was a little bit different than Mary. Mary had a personal conversation with, with uh, angel Gabriel. And we see here that in the uh, in Ma actually in Matthew chapter one. You can read more about Joseph, but he spoke to an angel in a dream. An angel spoke to him and uh, settled some of the questions that he had about Mary's condition. And so, but he did hear from an angel. Also, um, he is in the family line of King David, which is a very key thing. The Bible says in 2 Samuel chapter 7, we see that God, he told King David, he said, listen, I am going to promise you that in your line and lineage, in your family tree, there will be a, a savior that will be born that will save your people. And so this is a key thing because this is a part of the prophecy that is fulfilled in this Bible story. And also he is faithful to the law. And um, because he is faithful to the law, you know, he, he did a lot of things that he was supposed to do, but also he loved Mary. So he didn't do everything, which we'll talk about in Luke chapter one. He is obedient to the Lord. Not only is he faithful to the law, but he is more, more importantly, he is obedient to the Lord. Next, we're going to talk about uh, the angel Gabriel. The angel Gabriel is one of the two good angels that is named in the Bible. The other one's Michael. You have Michael and Gabriel. And um, so you have two of them that are named. You see a lot of angels in the Bible, but only two are really named. Um, he is a, or he first appeared to us in Daniel chapter 8. And you can read that if you would like. He's talking to uh, Daniel. Um, he also stands in the presence of God. 
when you read about um, what he does is he stands in the presence of God and he delivers a great news to people. Um, he speaks to four people in the Bible. He speaks to um, Mary. He speaks to Joseph in a dream. He also speaks to Zechariah and Daniel. And so he speaks to four people in the Bible. Um, all of his messages point to Jesus, which is incredible uh, because everything that he talks about points to a Jesus that is going to be born and change everything. Also, uh, he gives the name of two babies. He gives the name of John the Baptist, and he also gives the name of Jesus. How awesome would that be? Today, we're going to take a look in uh, Luke chapter 1, and we're going to look at three areas in which we can allow God to write his story on our life. So let's look at Luke chapter 1, verse number 26. It says, in the six-month Elizabeth's pregnancies, uh, God sent an angel, Gabriel, to Nazareth, a town in Galilee. Verse number 27 says, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. It says the virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, greetings. You are highly favored, and the Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You have conceived and given birth to a son, and you will call his name Jesus. Verse number 32 says, and he will be great, and he will be called the son of the most high. And the Lord God will give him the thrones of his father, David. Verse number 33 says, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever, and his kingdom will never end. And so, in other words, this is a permanent thing. Verse number 34, it says, and he will, and, and how will this be, Mary asked. The angel asked, this I am a virgin. And the angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she was said to be unable to conceive in her and she's in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. Verse number 38 says, And I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. So that's the story in Luke chapter 1, uh, verse number uh, 26 verse, verse through 38. And I want to kind of look at some things. Um, how can God write his story on our life? And here we are, we're, we're 2,000 years later, how can God write his story on our life? And so first of all, uh, when we do that, when we say, God, listen, you have your plans, he says, listen, my plans are now his plans. My plans are now his plans. When we look at this this passage of scripture right here, uh, Mary and Joseph, they were uh, espoused to be married, and uh, they had already made their covenant to each other, and they were technically already legally married, and they were just preparing a place for Mary, and they were just waiting until they can uh, finish up the marriage. And if Mary and Joseph were like any other young couple, I'm pretty sure that they had lots of plans. I'm pretty sure their plans were pretty big, just like everybody else's plans. I remember um, when I asked uh, Heather, my bride, to marry me, she said yes, of course. And then uh, later on, shortly after that, she brought this big notebook in. And when she opened the notebook, it was full of all these plans and it had all kind of information like what is this and she was like i've been planning this for a long time i was just waiting for you to ask and so a lot of times we have big plans in life a lot of times we have great and mighty plans in our life but sometimes god comes up and he comes into our life and he says listen i have something bigger for you i have something better for you and we have a choice we have we can we can choose oh, no, i want to do my own plans or we can be like Mary and say, you know what? I am the Lord's servant. It says, may your word be fulfilled in me. And when we allow God to write in his story on our life, a lot of times it changes our plans. I'm pretty sure that this wasn't in Mary's plans at all. I'm pretty sure that this didn't fit into Joseph's plan either. Obviously, uh, when you read in the book of Matthew, Joseph wasn't very happy about this. And um, it wasn't part of his plan. But a lot of times, whenever we serve God, God has a, 
a plan that's bigger than our plans, a, a plan that is better than our plans, a plan that touches more lives than the plans that we have. So a lot, a lot of times when we say, listen, God, I want to live happily ever after, but, um, and I want to serve you. And God says, listen, I want you to do something amazing. And he says, I want you to let me write my story on your life, but your, your plans may change. But when that happens, my plans are now his plans. Next, we see um, that my body is now his body. Here's Mary. She's a virgin. She's not supposed to be pregnant. She's, she's saving herself for her man, for, for Joseph. And here, um, God says, listen, this is a little bit more personal. This is not just changing my plans. This is changing my body. And a lot of times God asks us to do things as Christians. He says, listen, I'm, I want you to live your life. I want you to live your life to honor me, to glorify me. So the other people, when they see your life, what they're going to see, they're going to see God. And sometimes when God says, listen, I want to change your plans. Sometimes God goes a little bit further. He says, listen, I want, he said, I want not just your plans. How about, how about we change your body? And, and sometimes God says, listen, um, I need you. I need you to be a testimony for me. And when that happens, when we say, God, I want you to write your plans. I want you to write your story on my life. Sometimes it includes my plans are now his plans. And now we see that my body is his body. Next, we see my future is now his future. My future is now his future. I'm pretty sure that um, when, when you finish out the New Testament, when you finish out Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you can read about how Mary was a faithful mom and joseph was a faithful father to jesus and mary was so faithful that she was even there at the foot of the cross when jesus died on the cross and i'm pretty sure that wasn't in her plans i'm pretty sure that wasn't in her future what she wanted but you know when she said god i want you to write your story on my life and i want you to change my plans and i want you to use my body how you see fit that means that my future is now his future you know, it's a, it's a pretty incredible story how Mary and Joseph, they just, they changed their entire lives to obey God. And we see other people in the Bible who did the very, very same thing. And um, how does that translate to us today in 2020? How does that translate to us? Well, there's this, uh, there's this thought that we are a lot like Mary and Joseph here in 2020 because God has asked us to do something amazing. He's asked us to carry jesus to the world mary he she literally carried jesus in her stomach and gave birth to him and here in 2021 we see that god is saying hey listen i want you as a christ follower i want you as a as a christian to carry jesus whether it be through your plans whether it be through your body whether it be through your future i want you to carry jesus not physically like Mary did, but emotionally, spiritually, and in your life, in your, by your testimony. I want you to carry Jesus, and I want you to carry him to the world because the people that live next to you, they may not have Jesus. The people that live you know, around you they may not have Jesus. The, the people that you go to school with, they may, they may not have Jesus. Even the people that you go to church with, they may not have Jesus. But you know what our job is? The Bible says that we're supposed to allow God to write his story on our life. Like an autobiography, the, the word that we made up. But we're supposed to allow God to write his story on our life. Well, the big question that we have today for myself and for you is, are you allowing God to write his story on your life? Or are you saying, God, man, I got a story. I got my own story, and I, I don't need your story. Well, the good news is you have an opportunity today, today at this moment. You can take time, and you can say, God, I want to be like Mary and be like Joseph and be like the Bible story where, where the angel Gabriel comes, and he speaks to Mary. And then Mary what she says in verse 38, I want this to be the prayer of my life and the prayer of your life. And here's what it says. It says, I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. And so today, I hope that you will allow God to 
write his story on your life and it may it will change your plans and it'll and he'll use your body he'll use your testimony and it'll change your future and i'm a living proof of that and i'm going to tell you that on this side of it my plans were definitely not as good as god's plans and god used my body in a, in a greater way that i could have ever done and my future is just so much better today because a long time ago i gave my life to christ and i pray that today i pray that today that you will think about the question are you allowing god to write his story on your life and so today um as we end our bible study today i hope that you are encouraged to the fact that god has a plan for you god has a plan for you he has a plan for your your body he has a plan for your testimony he has a plan for your for your um your future and uh next week next week we're going to talk about jesus and listen today if you don't know jesus as your personal lord and savior if you don't know why jesus was born if you've never said listen god you are you are my lord and savior and i want to i want you to write your story my life. if you don't even know who god is to write your write his story in your life i want you to know that we're going to tell you next week about jesus and about how he came for you he came to give you a special gift matter of fact next week uh, we're going to be talking about um jesus the gift that's worth regifting and i can remember a time in my own life when i was a teenager that someone they sat down with me and they shared the gospel with me and they said listen your life will be better your life is meant to worship god and ever since then it's been it, there's been some struggles there's been some difficult times just like everybody else but the good thing is is i have god and i have hope and i have the peace that god gives and i pray that today that as we are ending this bible study today I, i'm going to pray for you and i'm going to pray that god will just use this bible study to encourage you to point you to jesus i want to be just like angel gabriel and point you to jesus because i can't save you I can't do anything for you but except for pointing to Jesus. And I pray that today that you would have been encouraged to the fact that you are valuable to God. And God has a plan for you. And God has desires for you. And you are not worthless, but you are worth everything to God. He gave his only son for you. In John 3:16, the most popular verse that we hear about is says for god so loved the world that he gave his only son for you he gave his only son for you and so uh today let's pray as we end our bible study and we'll see you the next time and uh, we look forward to worship with you again and uh, let's pray lord thank you for today lord as we come before you we are so blessed to be able to look at the story of joseph and of mary and of the angel gabriel and what i pray that today that you would help us to look at you and with our eyes and our and listen to you with our ears and say and say god i am a servant of the lord and whatever you want in my life let it be done well i thank you for allowing me to be able to preach your word to be able to fellowship with you like you intended us for or thank you for your love well, i pray for each and every person who's watching this video well i pray that you would just bless them that you would use this video to encourage them Lord, I pray that right now that the Holy Spirit would just do a work in their heart and that you would just do something special in their life. Lord, I pray for a special blessing right now on anyone who's watching this video. Lord, you are so, so good, and we're so thankful for your blessings. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you for spending this time with me. It's been a joy to be able to worship with you. If you have any questions, uh, message us below, and uh, we look forward to seeing you next week as we talk again as happily ever after.